Hello and welcome to Being Wendy. Hello. So today we are going to be talking about um, uh, there's a trip, a cycling trip I organized recently from Nairobi to Diani. Um, for any foreigners, Nairobi is the capital city of Kenya, and Diani is in the coastal part. Nairobi is in the central part of the country, and Diani is in the coastal parts of the country and the distance between Nairobi and Diani is approximately 500 maybe 500 and I don't know I'm approximating around 540 kilometers that's what I think um, I didn't personally cycle the whole trip that's why I may not be so certain but it's around there um, the group that we are cycling with or rather the group that did this tour it's called Baskiri Safaris which I co-founded um, in 2022 and yeah so basically this is just the story of how planning was for me um, and why we decided to do this trip or why I am so passionate particularly about this tour the coast trip for me is such it's a passion project I love it with all my heart I put my heart into it and yeah, so that's why we are covering this story. Um, some of you may not know that I picked up cycling in 2021. So I'm three years into cycling um, this year. And I'm very excited because it has really changed the trajectory of my life. Well, so where did this idea come from? So before I started cycling, I wasn't literally a fitness person. I was just, I was just bumming. And then I was looking for a new thing, a new sport or rather something different. Then I stumbled on pond cycling. One of my friends actually um, invited me. We had gone to high school together and he was like, you know what, um, give this one a shot. Because he did it and I joined and I loved it. Um, the group I was cycling with at the time, I remember I joined in September the 11th and then in October, they cycled from Nairobi to Mombasa which for me was mind blowing. It was around 450 kilometers. At the time I was only doing like 30 kilometers and I was like, wait, what? And the group had a huge number of women and children. And I didn't go, but I said, I'll observe. That passed. In March of 2022, we cycled from Nairobi to Arusha. Arusha is in Tanzania. And for me, that was way tired than me. I was like, no. <laughs> I had a passport. I had never traveled out of the country. It had never been stamped. And the first time it's being stamped, it's me crossing with a bicycle. I was like, there's something here that I, I need to tap into. And so that's where my I married my love for traveling and cycling. And uh, that year, mid year, mid 2022, um, I had gone to, I had lived in Malindi for two months. Malindi is a town in the coastal um, areas of Kenya. And I was working there, um, I was doing my judicial attachment. Soon you guys will be calling me a lawyer. Ah! Ooh, let's keep calm, baby. <laughs> but um, yeah, um, I was doing my judicial attachment. And during my judicial attachment, I fell in love with that town. And I came back and I told my current business partner, I told him, we have to plan a ride from Nairobi to Malindi. And he was like, that would be difficult, but I think it's possible. And that's where my love for cycling to Mombasa, the coastal part of the country, came in. Because I thought it would be relatively easier compared to going to like Western Kenya or going to the northern parts of the country because there's very little coverage um, when it comes, to especially the northern parts of the country, which is quite unfortunate. Um, when it comes to like going to Western Kenya, I'm scared of the hills. I think in my head, I'm just like the hills. I don't know if I'm ready. So to do a long tour, it also needs to make sense um, with the kind of elevation we're going to be covering and the kind of fitness people have. So that's where my love for cycling to the coast came in. And also truly, I am just one. I love the beach. I love going to the coast. Ah, I love it. I love the water. It makes me happy and it heals me. So that's where the love or rather the excitement to do this tour came from um so last year we planned last year is 2023 we cycled from nairobi to malindi so that product let me call it a product that trip was um 
was not created for everyone to do Nairobi to Malindi. So how we do it is Nairobi, the first day of cycling is Nairobi to Kibwezi, um, which is 188 kilometers. It's the longest stretch. Um, yeah, and I think the biggest challenges are like the first 80 kilometers and the last 20 to 30. Um, because the first 80, it's not, it's not flat, it's a bit hilly. Then the rest becomes uh, relatively flat. And then as you're approaching Kibwezi, it's like you're not moving. There's a lot of wind that just makes it very hard for you to um, cycle faster and takes up a lot of energy. But yeah, that's day one. Day two is from Kibwezi to Voe, which is approximately 134 kilometers. It's normally the shorter beat, uh, shorter stretch, but the toughest because you deal with heat, wind, and then you're crossing Savo National Park. It's beautiful. It's extremely beautiful, the animals. But crossing Savo is 77 kilometers or 80 kilometers stretch of seeing just cars and and the the park there's no town in between very little um human interaction there's only one little shop <laughs> where we stop for like sodas and you don't get even cold sodas or water so everything has to be bought from day when you're coming to voy because you can't there's nowhere else to buy water or snacks so you need to even eat like break like when you're having breakfast you have to make it lunch because from that stretch the next town is Voi. that's your destination so depending on how well you manage the stops on that trip it could be short or you could be a very long day but that's the toughest stretch is tough people tough um day three is Voi to mombasa which is honestly i don't think it's a tough stretch um but it's not it's not a walk in the park for me it's around 150 160 kilometers and um there's a lot of heat the heat on this tour is insane <laughs> um it like it finishes you the water is not just for drinking people pour water on themselves because whatever you start feeling is just uncomfortable and then the last day so when you're doing to Malindi is Mombasa to Malindi is another 150 or 160, but Mombasa to Diani this year was like 56, there about less than 60 kilometers, which was bearable. I really thought that was good. But last year, 150 again was it was quite a stretch. I think I really pushed my body because that year I did a hundred, I did 630 kilometers in total, which was mad if you ask me. But yeah, so I did it um, last year. I did it with five other men from Nairobi. So the the product we created was from Voi. So you are people are taking a train from Nairobi to Voi, and then they met we, they met us in Voi, and then from Voi to Mombasa, Mombasa to Malindi. So it was two days of cycling. But a group of men approached us who are already um, signed up for the trip. They approached us and said, um, "I think us we'd want to do from Nairobi." So we curated something for them that would align with the rest of the team. So they started earlier and the rest of the team met. But the difference was I really wanted to do it. You remember when I was leaving Malinda's like, I have to cycle here. So I went to my business partner and I told him, do you think I can do it? He said, yes. Um, I asked him, do you think they would mind? The, the guys who had asked, the, he's like, let me ask. Then the guys were like, you know what? The more the merrier, tell her to come on board. We will support her. So that's how I joined. That trip was. <laughs> that trip was in I remember like getting to Savo and I had tear balancing tears. I wanted to cry. I was so tired. I wanted to quit there, but um I didn't. I had the best team with me. So knowing all this, planning this year's trip, I had so much information when it comes to um planning, when it comes to organizing. I had a lot of information. Um to help and make this one a bit more seamless. And also for the women particularly, I had a lot of tips and tricks um, for the ladies. So that year, last year's trip became proof of concept that we could plan um, a trip of that magnitude. And we did. So marketing this year's trip wasn't so difficult. Let me talk about planning and budgeting, especially for um, 
the business. Um, so the biggest expense is normally accommodation and breakfast. Those are the most important. Those are the biggest expenses. So, because most places offer bed and breakfast, so you need to get that price in check. Um, it really depends on the standards of your trip or the people you're cycling with. How high or how low are their standards? So that's how you go. Then there's a lot of nitty gritties. For example, um, you need to budget for how the bikes are going to come back, how the people are going to come back, um, the water people will be having, um, fuel for the chase cars because we always have a chase car or two. This year we had two. Luckily, um, we had um, support from sponsors who I will write down below. You guys will be able to reach out to them if you need them or whatever. Yes. Um, yeah. So basically, planning and budgeting is normally a tough part because then if you get only three people, it's like sometimes your math goes off. But um, so after you plan and budget, you cross your fingers <laughs> and then you mark it. So when we talked to, um, luckily because I had done it last year, a lot of people had approached us saying, when are we doing the cost tour? So we had the dates in check really, really early this year. Um, a lot of people um, booked early. They told us we are going to be part of it. And luckily for us, we didn't really need to market it too much. Literally last year's trip marketed itself. So people just came on board. To a point we had to not take in more people because we couldn't accommodate them. Or rather the places we were even sleeping at couldn't accommodate um, more people. So that was the challenge we had. So let me talk about preparation finally. Um, prepar preparing a group of like 30 people to cycle a trip as long as this one is extremely intensive. It is difficult, it is stressful, but um, I believe God gave me that mantle. Um, there were, we did rides every Saturday, I think for 10 weeks. Yes. I think we did a countdown and we started doing rides every Saturday for 10 weeks to just prepare people. The kind of rides we are doing were tougher than usual um, and longer. So if we did a really tough ride, sometimes it would be short, sometimes it would be tough and long, sometimes it would be really long, um, just to give you a taste of, of what it would look like and feel like to be on the road for as many hours as possible. Um, what this trip will not prepare you for is um, the psychological, like the, the, the rides give you physical fitness but then you also need to work more um, during the week to get in your work your workout done um, and also you need to prepare your mind to know that you can do it i think your mind is your biggest enemy or your biggest friend on this trip if your mind tells you you can't do it you won't do it if, you're, if you prepare yourself so well and prepare your mind to do it you will be able to do it. That is, I truly believe your mind is your biggest asset on this trip. Um, we prepared almost 30 plus people who would come for rides um, for this trip. Uh, and it was so amazing to see. I don't think we did that last year. Last year we did a good number of rides, but not, not as many as we did this year. So I applaud us for that. And I can't wait to do the next um, edition. But when it comes to preparation, I believe the bulk of the trip was prepared. Actually, I wasn't prepared, but we'll get into that um, in the next part of this series. But majority of the people were prepared and I'm really happy and proud of myself for doing that. Um, yeah, so if you have any questions regarding this trip, you can just ask them in the comment section down below. Um, I will be able to probably respond on the comments or maybe I will just do a cumulative video with all the questions you guys may um, have uh, for the, yeah, with regarding to, with regard to cycling and um, the planning and preparation. That's what we are doing. Then other parts will be coming with the different days and how the challenges, my cycling bit, because this year I only cycled like one and a half days. Um, last year I did the whole tour, so I'll also cover like what was different this year and why I didn't finish 
but that will be on the next part. Uh, yeah, thank you so much for tuning in. Um, if you want to support my channel, you can buy the merchandise. This is Feel the Fear and Do It Anyway. I designed it myself. Um, you can place an order. There's a link that will be down below. Or you can place the order and support the business. And I'll be very, very happy. Thank you so much for tuning in. Don't forget to like, comment, share, and subscribe to my channel if you haven't. And we will be back with more videos. Bye.